welcome back guys to the Spurgeon Piper. This is Wilson with you. So today for our tobacco review, we are covering Briarworks Back Down South. Uh, now this is a Virginia Perik that they have. Been wanting to try for some time and it kind of took me a while to feel comfortable reviewing it. So we're finally going to get into it. Let's get some background on the blend. Uh, this is coming from PipesAndCigars.com as they have a better description. And they note that this blend uses one of the most typically southern tobaccos, Perique. The heavily fermented leaf is blended with select Virginias and pressed into a flake and stored in the signature Briarworks mason jar. There's a subtle citrus note that enhances the naturally sweet fruitness of both the flu cured leaf and the Perique. If you're a vapor fan, you won't want to miss out on back down south pipe tobacco. Pair your back down south blend with light bourbon or smoky flavored drink of your choosing for added flavor in your smoke. So getting further background on the information we get from tobaccoreviews.com that it's manufactured by Cornell and Dill, though it's under the Briarworks name. Uh, it, it is a vapor and they mentioned there's no flavoring. There is flavoring. The cut is flake, though we're going to return to that. And it comes in a two ounce mason jar, currently available in most places online. Uh, you can find it at Smoking Pipes for 13, or excuse me, you can find it at Smoking, Pipe, Smoking Pipes for 1360. Pipes and cigars you can find for 1269, and tobacco pipes for 1318. Now, let me just real quick reference something that I really like about Briarworks. Uh, no matter what you think of the blends, I think it's a great idea to have mason jars, pre-packaged in a mason jar, which I think most of us put our blends in mason jars. So no matter how you feel about the other blends or this blend, which this so far is the only Briarworks blend I've tried, I think this is a great marketing scheme. I'm not sure why some others have not picked up on it. Maybe there's a good reason, shipping costs, uh, just weight overall. But I wanted to make that side note because I, I was really enticed to buy Briarworks simply for this reason itself. All right, so with that said, let's get a look at the blend in close uh, view. Well, here we are with the blend. And as you can see, it's not really flake form. Uh, it's more broken flake, and that's really how it comes. I, I, I have broken uh, some of the flake down, but overall, it, it just comes in larger pieces like this. Um, in the jar itself, it does appear as more of a flake form, but it immediately breaks apart when you touch them. I mean, when you pull them out, they just crumble. So bear that in mind. Uh, you can see the red and bright Virgi bright leaf in this blend, uh, some darker pieces of the Perique. Um, and the, the tin note and the taste, which I'll get into, does give off a, a flavoring or topping. So tobaccoreviews.com doesn't mention that. It does have it. So bear that in mind if you're someone who does not like a heavy or noticeable flavoring topping. All right, so I have my bowl filled in my Ashens 220 uh, with the blend, and I have my notes up. Let's get it lit and talk more about it. Now, I mentioned that this building took me a little bit longer to get my, my pulse on it or my finger on it because my first smoke... I was all over the place with it. Uh, and it, and even afterwards, it just kind of depended on the smoke, on the pipe, on my thoughts, on what I'm tasting. It, it's not your straightforward Virginia Perique. So up front, if you like unique Virginia Perique blends, I think you're gonna enjoy this, uh, just, just simply for something that's unique. But up front, we can talk about the, the Virginia. So the, the Virginias are a blend of you know, bright leaf, some red leaf. Uh, it gives off you know, the hay and lemon of the bright, uh, you know, hay, hay, hay and lemon notes uh, with fruity like raisin notes from the red Virginia. So those are your typical taste buds or tastes that, that, that we know of. Uh, I expected some earthiness, maybe some breadiness from the Virginia. Did not get that. I don't know why I expected that, but I suppose just by the look of the leaf. Um, the Perique, the Perique's quite balanced. Uh, it's it's noticeable both in its flavor, so we think of the uh, fermented fruit that Perique is usually known for, uh, and the preparedness. So th those things are pretty even and consistent throughout the smoke, I would say. Now, 
Now on the Perique, I would say in this blend, and I noticed this after my third, fourth, fifth smoke, the, the Perique is maybe strong or this type of leaf they're using. The Perique has a strong flavor. So I'm not talking about the pe pepperiness. I'm talking about a flavor that comes off the Perique. And it's not my to my utmost liking. I've, I've had it in other blends and I don't care for it. Or it could be a topping that's interacting with the Perique that just sets it off. Uh, which gets to another point. Uh, TobaccoReviews.com has it listed that it has no flavoring or topping. It certainly does. Uh, some call it a, a liqueur topping. I think that's what it is. Some type of sweet liqueur. Some mention it's a bourbon. I don't, I don't find it that specific. But you are certainly getting a topping on it. Uh, it mentions in the Pipes and Cigar recording, or uh, the description, I should say, that it's a citrus. I don't, I don't know if I'm picking that up so much. But that flavoring is, is quite evident. I think it does dissipate mid-bowl. Which, funny enough, that's when I actually enjoy the blend. So, uh, you know, just, just thinking through all that, it leads me to believe that that flavor I'm talking about that I don't care for, that seems to be involved with the Perique, it, it may be in an, in, an interaction with the the topping. It could be more of the topping. But I, I found it in another Vapor Perique blends, that, which is why I, I feel it's it was had something to do with Perique. The nicotine level is maybe right past medium, uh, nothing that really set me off. Uh, if I had two back-to-back -back bowls, maybe I would, I would start feeling it, but no issues there. Uh, the room note is is tolerable, maybe to pleasant, you know, somewhere around those lines, nothing that uh, is out of the normal there. Uh, and then getting on to comparisons. Uh, Exhausted Rooster is one of the first blends that came to mind, which being a Cornell and Dill blend, uh, it makes sense. So, Exhausted Rooster has Kentucky, so kind of leave that aside. There's some similar uh, flavors and notes coming out from that blend uh, that I find similar to this one. And then another one that is similar from what I remember is Hado's Delight by GLPs, which, which is kind of a similar makeup uh, with a similar topping. So, uh, that one had a flavor, and I want to return to it in review. That one had a flavor I didn't care for that I felt like was... I like was similar to this one, uh, and it mostly came from the from the topping it contains. So I guess last comments uh, thoughts on it. It has grown on me. So I'm near the end of my bowl, uh, or excuse me, I'm near the end of my mason jar, my jar of it, and it has grown on me since I've had it. Uh, but I'm not a fan of the bourbon topping or the alcoholic topping so much. I don't think it just fits well with the blend. And you may be totally different. Uh, for me, it just doesn't suit well. Uh, there's other Virginia Perique blends I care for more. I like. Uh, I don't hate this blend. But it's not standing out for me as a blend I want to return to. So with that said, I'm going to give it about a 6.5 out of 10. So it's above a halfway. It's so an enjoyable blend for all intents and purposes, but nothing that would win me over to return to. Uh, the only big plus on this blend compared to other Virginia Perique blends has nothing to do with the blend itself, and that's just simply with the mason jar. And that's kind of silly because you can buy mason jars. Uh, so on the contents of the blend itself, for me, it's unique, but the flavors it's, it, it brings forth, I'm not really searching for, doesn't really... Uh, scratch that itch I have. So there you have it, guys. If you have tried this blend, let me know. And, and maybe let me know and let others know the other Briarwork blends out there. Do you like one? They seem to be quite controversial. There's a lot who don't like any of the Briarworks blends out there. And uh, it's they're, they're, they're a set of blends I really want to get more into and give a try. So give your thoughts below uh, and let me know what you think of it. And so until then, guys, we'll be back next week with another video, and we'll talk to you soon.